Hello everybody and welcome back to the fourth episode in how to build the Chrome Dinosaur game using Pygame in Python. Up until this point in the series, we've already learned how to display the dinosaur on our screen, how to make him duck and jump, and how to create the background, as well as a score. In this episode, we are going to be adding the obstacles to the game, which includes the small cactus, the large cactus, and the pterodactyl. We will also take care of the collision detection. As you can see on the footage on the right hand side, every time the dinosaur hits an obstacle, his hitbox turns red. Alright, so let's get started. As always, I've gone ahead and minimized a couple of the classes, just to make sure that it's easy to follow the changes that we're going to make today. But a link to the entire code is always going to be available down in the description right below the like button. We're going to start off by making a parent class for all the obstacles. This parent class is going to have an init method, an update method, and a draw method. The init method of the obstacle class is going to receive two arguments. The first argument is the image of the obstacle we want to display. And the second argument is going to be the type. Now the type is going to be important with the cacti which we display on our screen. More specifically, the type is going to be an integer value between 0 and 2, and it is going to determine what type of cactus image is going to be displayed on our screen. Then we can move on to get the rectangle coordinates of the image which we're displaying. And finally, we're going to set the x coordinate of the obstacle to the screen width. That means whenever an obstacle is created, it is just off the edge of the right hand side of the screen. Now let's move on to the update method. The update method will help us move the obstacle across the screen. We can do this by simply decreasing the x coordinate of the rectangle of the image by the game speed. In addition to that, we're going to be adding an if statement to the update method, and this if statement is going to help us remove the obstacle as soon as it moves off the screen on the left hand side. Then finally, in the draw function, we're simply going to blip the image onto our screen. All right, so that concludes the parent class for all our obstacles. So let's move on and create the small cacti and the large cacti. First, we're going to create a class called small cactus, and it is going to inherit from the class obstacle. This class is only going to have an init method, which takes the image as a parameter. After that, we're going to set the type to a random integer between the values 0 and 2. And after we've set the type, we're going to initialize the init method of the parent class. And finally, we need to set the y coordinate of where we want the cactus to be displayed. Now, it is really convenient that the large cacti behave just like the small ones. So when we create the class large cactus, it is going to be identical with one small exception. And that is that the y coordinate, which we're going to choose, is going to be a bit lower. And by choosing a lower y coordinate, we display the image higher on our screen which is exactly what we want to do with a large cacti. Finally, let's go on to create the pterodactyl, which I'm simply going to be calling bird because it's easier to say. The class bird is also going to inherit from the class obstacle. And it's going to be really similar to the classes we've just created. In contrast to the cacti, which are not animated, the bird, which flies across the screen, flaps its wings and is animated. In addition to that, remember how we added the variable type, which determined how many cacti are displayed at once? With the bird, it only makes sense to display one at a time. So the type is also going to be redundant here. So when we go ahead and create the class for the bird, we're going to have to take into consideration the fact that there is only one type and that it is animated. So let's start off by creating the init method for the class bird. And we're just going to set the type to zero right off the get-go. Then we're going to initialize the parent class, just like we did with the cacti. And then we're going to add the y coordinate at which the bird is going to fly. And finally, we're going to add an index and set it to zero. We will see where the index is used in just a moment. Now, although our obstacle class has a function called draw, the draw function in the obstacle class is only suited to the cacti. For the bird, however, we need to make another draw function which overrides the one in the parent class. Now the reason for this is quite simply because the bird is animated and we need to include that in the draw function. 
So in the draw function of the bird, we're going to create an if statement. And this if statement is going to reset the index to the value of 0 once it has reached the value of 9. Then we can go ahead and blit the image onto our screen. And at the very end, we want to increment the variable index by 1. So what's going to happen here is quite simple. For the first five times this draw function is called, the first image of our bird is going to be shown. The next five times it is called, the second image of our bird is going to be shown. And then on the 11th iteration, we're going to reset the index back to zero. And this happens over and over again, making the bird look animated. Okay, so now in the main function, we're going to add the variable called obstacles as a global variable. And this variable is going to store all the obstacles, such as the bird, the small cactus, and the large cactus coming towards the dinosaur on the screen. And in order to make the obstacles appear on screen, we're going to create an if statement in our main loop. We're going to say if the length of the obstacles list is equal to zero, then we want to randomly create either a small cactus, a large cactus, or a bird by appending one of these objects to the obstacles list. Finally, we're going to call the draw function and the update function on every single obstacle in the obstacles list. And in addition to that, we're going to add an if statement for the collision detection by saying that if the rectangle of the dinosaur image collides with the rectangle of an obstacle image, we want the hitbox of the dinosaur to turn red. So now, if we run this, you can see that our dinosaur is on screen and the obstacles come towards the dinosaur. And every time the dinosaur collides with one of the obstacles, then his hitbox does indeed turn red. All right, we're going to leave it there for this video. See you in the next one. Thank you.